of our people, and welcome back to part 39 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. You're having a wonderful day. You just caught me enjoying a little view out to Noob Yoke here, one of the little pergolas that we built last episode uh, as part of Noob Yoke's grander estate. And extremely sorry about the random music that was in this episode. Uh, that was a editing fart on my behalf, so <laughs> sorry about that. Hopefully we won't have that again. But thank you for all the support regardless. Uh, really cool build, really fun way of using the Seaside Resort stuff. I hope you'll manage to take some inspiration from it. And in today's episode, we are going to be heading down onto the coastline to work on one of the more fun type of builds to do in City Skylines, alongside your actual skylines, kind of transport hubs, or larger park spaces. And this is going to be uh, the cargo uh, container port. Really cool, super heavy industrial builds, and that require a lot of terraforming, and indeed fall under that remit of uh, builds that can become extremely ugly very quickly. But there should be some nice ideas to take away here. Let's see what we can do with the container port in Vanilla City Skylines. So really, what it is we're looking to do here is to terraform out a series of little peninsulas uh, into uh, the sea, which will be used to hold sort of larger important assets like the actual cargo harbours themselves, uh, alongside uh, some factories over here today too. So let's remove the existing networks. Uh, there's going to be a lot of work to be done around here. So we'll scoop away a fair bit of this hill, and then we're going to start using that to terraform out these little peninsulas. Right, it's come out quite a distance here. It's going to be quite an expensive job, this one. You want to make sure you have money in the bank for it. Okay, and general rough land mass. So very similar to what we did over here, right? We're going to chisel out the landscape to suit the build that we're trying to place around it. So I'm going to head and time lapse this up. It's sort of the same process that we've done when working with water terraforming before. I'm going to go ahead, terraform out all these little peninsulas and get the shape of the shoreline right and then we can start having a look at some asset placements. So now we have a rough kind of frame cut out for the port itself. You can use dirt road frames to help uh, sort of align the terraforming. Uh, again, it's things we've covered in the new sky before, sort of using this sort of technique to chisel out shapes in the land. And this is just another variation of that, you know, you don't have to follow exactly here if you are following along as a beginner. You know, this is very much just a design. Google Earth is fantastic for sort of taking shapes like this and then converting them into cities. So now what I want to do is just grab a little bit of uh, simple uh, seawall fence and then just aligning in with mainly sort of grid and road guideline really. Uh, we just want to align some stretches of key. So we can now use the snap guidelines of the road to perfectly sort of square off uh, all of our keyframes. I'm going to be going probably to about here I think. Leaves us a little bit of detail and space between. So we just know we want to save that one tile. Let's do the same thing again over here and then hopefully this will just connect in. And then everyone's going to be happy. So just get this all the way around it. And then we can start having a look at bringing in some road network stuff. Then how we can use this initial dirt road frame to actually help construct our road network in the port. So we'll be right back. And if you are enjoying the episode guys and would like to show some support and get something cool in return. Why not have a look at some overcharged egg merchandise which is linked down below. Including canvases of your favourite skylines, some bottles and t-shirts. Go check it out, it really helps support the channel. So we can now actually already sort of enjoy the very industrious view to the downtown eventually, which will be a really wonderful come the night time cinematics, I'm sure. But the keys have gone in under great duress. I left this side exposed because I'm not entirely sure how we want this to sit yet, so there's no point keying it up. 
but for the main harbour we do now have the keys in. So let's have a little look at placing in some key assets and then we'll bring in the road network here. Uh, so first of all I want some factories as part of my harbour. So I'm going to use the car factory here and we're going to measure this one up to fit perfectly in here. So really big important asset the car factory. It uh, also has some cute little car props on it as well. And lots of industrial space and just big chungus building uh, to sit on the port here and it just looks great perched against the water doesn't it. So that's asset number one in. I'm going to be fairly happy with that for the time being. So now I want to break uh, this road network frame uh, because I would actually like uh, another factory to sit in this space and this is going to be uh, the shipyard factory which is a super cool looking one. So I want to line up this to sit pretty much in the middle. You can pretty much eyeball it. About there I think. Alright. Really cool looking industrial asset again and these cranes uh, when the factory is fed with its resources are actually animated. Uh, so that's going to be a really cool addition into the port. And there are already two buildings. And look at the vibe that we've created. You know, appropriate positioning of these sorts of assets um, really brings a build together. Uh, quite quickly, I think you'll be surprised to find out. Wonderful. So let's come ahead and use some of the new uh, free update roads that we got. A lot of these new one-way networks It will be really efficient for sort of piecing all this kind of stuff together. Great. So we've got that in now. Let's go ahead and grab the actual sort of cargo part of the cargo port. Uh, and this is going to be this one. So let's remove these dirt road frames for right now. Be careful not to delete the key because that can be a real ball ache. And then let's have two of these. So I'm using the ones from After Dark that have the rail lines on them too. Because we're going to do something pretty spicy with the rail stuff. So then I'd like another 10 units here. Now we'll connect on. Okay, whatever. That's fine then. <laughs> That's all right. That works for me. Cool. So then we'll have two of these here. These are going to be really good. Let's go ahead and get our rails hooked in. So don't usually use these ones. I kind of didn't really enjoy the look of the rail on there. But with what we've got going on with New York's rail stuff, I think we might be able to actually use this one today. So let's continue again to use these little two lane ones. Let's go ahead and grab uh, a five curve. Should be acceptable, right? And then we'll feed this into the one way system. Cool. So now we've got that in. Now I know how my rail is going to sit. So we can go ahead and grab this 10 curve onto road guideline as well. So we want to actually just. We this bit of key here, don't we? That's fine. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll do 10. That's going to come in like that. I might even sort of terraform this out here up against uh, the side of the cargo harbour itself. Just so we get that landmass. It'd be quite cool to decorate this as well. So let's come out by that 10 marker again. Let's make sure we are hitting that 10. Here we go. Cool. So we can have that there. And then this will do another 10 again. We can see where we want to do a little bit more terraforming just to give ourselves that breathing room. That's why we've not bothered keying up this side because I knew uh, that the rail would have to pass by here. Okay, and then hopefully another 10 curve. There we go. Yeah, we'll have to let the game play. Uh, so we get the uh, terrain behaving itself. But for right now, uh, we know we can hook the rail in. Yes, I'll sort that bit out as well so it's not got that little bump in it. But otherwise, sort of a key waterfront asset, that is what I'm going to go for here. We've got a car factory at the shipyard, and then we've got the two uh, cargo hubs as well. There is also one more asset I'd like in here, and this is going to be another factory. We're going to go for the modular house. So a lot of these factories that we're using here all share the same resource, so they're all going to be really easy to feed. Um, all three of them are using glass, plastic and metal, and then it's variation of animal products and uh, plain timber between the three of them. So really easy to supply. And it will be important that stuff as well as long as I'd uh, using Nubio sort of uh, industry area to supply them. Cool. So now we've got these in. It's just a case of kind of hooking uh, all these frames together and upgrading them into uh, a dirt road, or a one-way network, which we'll have a look at uh, now. So let's see what's happening here. Let's go ahead and slope this up so we can get back into town. Let that landscape open up for us. And I think I'm going to go for a little one-way toll booth here. There's something of a security gate into the port. So, or two way large toll booth, sorry, is what we're meaning to say. Tremendous, wonderful. 
So now again, let's just extend this road frame down here so we know we're snapped onto a 90 degree angle. Looks like some further terraforming of the cliff face here might also be required. Again, don't worry about those harsh terrain lines. We always bring it back in, right? Everyone's going to have a nice time eventually here today. Uh, so let's grab uh, the medium industry road. There we go. So we'll hook that in the bottom. Trim up that end. And then we can probably snap off and angle this now. Yes, and then be flush with the grid. That is what we want to happen. So now let's talk about how we can use a one-way system uh, to sort of flow things around here. So with the new roads, we're going to grab the three-lane one-way. Oh, so let's go for the four-lane. Let's sort of bulk it out a little bit. And then I want this one here now to run basically all the way down the length of the port with a road guideline on as well. Let's go over there and then we'll hook up to that space. That's going to be great. And then we can see now this one's going to come in and then feed through. We can come back outside the car factory and then it can feed back into the entrance. You can also put a roundabout here at the entrance if you want to, um, but with this one way configuration, it's not really needed. Everyone just sort of flows around, but it's another little sort of road network nuance you can throw in if you want something a bit more interesting than just straight roads. But the assets here will really sell the build uh, overall. Okay, so now let's bring in the rest of the one way network here. I'd like to come down from this spot eventually. Let's come up to. here for right now. I'll actually come down to the two lane one here as we branch off. And then let's give a little curve just into there and then all this can be reversed. So that's going to feed the cargo hubs which are then going to come back down this road. And then again traverse the direction. And then we can probably just hook that straight in I imagine. Yeah that's going to be far enough. Cool. Okay, so that's going to be all that supplied. So we'll fill this space with service assets, warehouses, etc. All things to supply these assets and make it look good. And again, I'm going to bring this one through here. And then I'm also going to factor in the rail now as well because I know that I'm going to want this to run uh, parallel with this network here. So let's snap into the grid. And then we'll just prepare that to eventually happen once we bring that rail through and have it come down here. Then I imagine we're going to have to do some pretty major slope work here in order to accommodate the rail line into this new cliff face. So let's go ahead and start scooping it out. We may get the gradient police after us today, everyone. Do be wary of them in the comments if they are there. This is justification for the gradient police to be found there. This is a fairly steep slope for a train, I imagine. But we should be okay, I think. Let's get a nice straight one up there. And then we can just hit that road guideline with a curve tool. Like this. And then this will serve uh, the town that will lie here. Uh, the Robinson Town when we come to do our three rural town builds. Otherwise, we've got three factories and two uh, import and export hubs. We've already got kind of a solid looking container port, haven't we? Very industrious looking waterfront build. Quite happy with this. So now that we have our key harbour assets positioned, what I'd like to do is essentially just crawl through the facility and sort of piece things together as we go. So of course we have three unique factories here, possibly four as well eventually come the end. So we definitely want lots of storage. And our large warehouses are certainly going to be a sort of a vibe, aren't they, in terms of generating that large industrial sort of scale. So again, orientation, always massively important. Why don't we see if we can bring up a little road behind here and then go ahead and give it a little uh, flip around here. That's going to be good for me. So our factories are pretty much sharing a lot of the resources. So we'll have this one to be storing a little bit of glass. Awesome. And then we'll grab a medium warehouse. Let's have this up against that one there. Pretty happy with that orientation, I think. And then again, we want to bring a road come through here now. So sometimes we can really let the assets shape how the internal of the complex develops. And we use some of uh, the demands here as well today. Uh, hopefully now as you're sort of playing New Oak, you're not letting the RCI demands dictate how the city looks, how it develops and grows. It, it's hopefully growing in your vision. Uh, sort of following this play style. And then I think we'll spam... Um, 
a little sextuplet of small warehouse yards, because these are really good once they're filled. Uh, so you want to be plastic, so what else do we need? Uh, metal. Okay, so you store metal, and then we'll just keep it in a moving rotation. So this one also wants animal products, so we'll have that. And then again, we will go for plastic, and then glass, and then metal. And this should be enough storage to keep everyone happy. We might need maybe one more medium warehouse. And then it's these two that want plain timber uh, in order to function. Cool. So let's just take a little look at what we've done here. I did a couple, well not a couple, quite a few warehouses actually. But uh, it's appropriate, isn't it? I think it works. It's not too bad. I'm going to be fairly happy with it anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in a power connection so we can hit play. And I'm really interested to see um, exactly how the traffic flow is down this country road. Because this is a lot of traffic for this little road to handle. Hopefully all our little traffic flow configurations around the terminals here with the four lane roads and then eventually back to the service interchange for the highway uh, should make a difference. And also having the cargo trains hooked in as well should make a real difference to the traffic. We'll, we'll just sort of see what happens together. So when we're looking at sort of larger industrial spaces like this, don't neglect other service assets like fire, water and power. They will often blend very well into this environment. So, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm in need of sewage. So why don't we place down, uh, perhaps, two sewage plants here. Alright. Yeah, and you can go for the eco ones, or non-eco, it's entirely up to you really. Let's get them hooked into the network. Okay. That's not too bad, is it? Let's hit play, and we'll hopefully start seeing some people move around. And uh, let's give a little bit of pathway detailing uh, to this little configuration over here. Let's bring some pathways between. We'll just sort of give them a little bit of detail. Have a couple of connections back onto this road. I think we'll also bring passenger trains down to this area as well. There's going to be a fair amount of workers. So we might as well provide them with a public transport connection outside of the ferries. Okay, so just some bushes and perhaps a gentle cluster. Of some green trees knocking about. Okay. Really simple detailing, but you just sort of notice sometimes you know simple is just the best way to go. Last episode was just repeated tree patterns and hedges, but look how nice it ended up being, right? Okay, so really happy with the water treatment plants there. That's gonna be a pretty cool aesthetic to get on board with, I think. And I'm gonna mostly be happy with that. Okay, so do we have the space here to bring through another one way road? Yes, we do. Uh, can we come on to an angle snap, though, please? Yes, we can. Wonderful. So we'll worry about the exact one-way configuration uh, in a second here, once we know uh, exactly where all of our assets are going to sit. Uh, so there is another factory here, as we continue to crawl through the complex that we could use, um, and this is going to be the toy factory. Now, I'm considering this because it's got a little bit of a sort of red brick vibe to it, and I think it blends really nicely with the shipyard. Almost like they are some sort of old sort of port buildings that were sort of red brick before all these, you know, modernised mass production uh, factories were sort of built. You want to add a little bit of lore into it, perhaps these are the older shipyard buildings. The rubber duck is a bit upsetting, <laughs> I think is the word. It's, uh, it's terrifying, isn't it, that? Tiny toys, it's just the most threatening duck you've ever seen. But we'll, we'll just bear with it. Uh, so there's probably not much cause for this road here now. We can probably delete that one. And then uh, let's go ahead and get everyone watered up. And then why don't we try and save just some like open green walkable space within the port? Maybe it's, you know, it's not sort of a super industrial port that everything has been kind of tarmacked or concreted. So let's, let's just bring in a little sort of meandering path pattern here with perhaps a couple of little live oaks knocking about in it. Okay, some of those smaller... Little content creator bushes too, always welcome. Some wild hedges there as well. And maybe some lighter undergrowth pallets too. We can just have that to occupy that space. We can fill it with more warehouses if you want, little bit generic industries only would probably be welcome. Otherwise, it's not too bad. So of course they probably won't receive much until we can figure the one-way system to supply them. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to actually try something. So, of course, we have the wall to wall specialization now. And throughout these industrial builds on the channel, we've always been a fan of including a little bit of office zoning uh, just as some like administration. 
but now I'm thinking that the wall to wall stuff will actually work quite nicely in this kind of configuration next to the warehouse. So we'll let that zone in, we'll give it a little specialization and see what happens with it. So let's move over to this block now. Uh, so a big shout out to uh, Zhuka Boa uh, for this one. Uh, he recently did a build sort of comprising of seven of like several different little port builds and came out really, really nicely. Um, I'll leave a link down to the video below. Uh, but what he did do was use the uh, crude oil tank storage farms uh, from the industry DLC with a monorail road that is elevated to almost serve as some sort of false pipeline action, as though it's kind of being exported from here. Incredibly cool aesthetic. So we just want to bring in a little elevated monorail road here. And then we're going to have this come uh, over the rail line. And then let's just go for a general curve. Let's get a nice big 10 one on the go. I actually think maybe, yes, I don't think we will curve it. We're just going to bend it on a straight angle, something like that. Okay, and then I want to bring this right back down to earth. So it's probably about there. There we go. And then we'll do a little bit of terraforming now. And then let's come up with our strength. Let's want to uh, grab a little bit of level terrain so we can expose the water into this little pipeline here. Uh, and then what Zuka did was these little sort of elevated pathways that serve as a place for uh, sort of dockers to moor up. Uh, so we'll let this water uh, settle in here a second. There we go. And then I'm just going to grab a regular dirt, a gravel path here. And then just little measurements of sort of 32, right? And we can get a road guideline here if we want to have them over this side. And then maybe do uh, a couple more sort of out this way. And then maybe one up here as well. And then what they serve as, there's little points for boats to tie onto. And then have this little mock oil pipeline come out of the industrial area. It's a really cool vanilla configuration. Again, big shout out to Zuko Boa for this one. Uh, please go show him some support. But look at that design, right? That aesthetic of like that false pipeline that comes out of the oil containers. Huge, huge fan of that. Okay, so we can almost have it like there is a little oil dock here where oil ships can come in and perhaps unload or load up a, a load of oil. And then I think with a little bit of pine spam um, around the back of this edge here will of course do the terraforming too so it looks a little bit more natural but we can definitely get an impression of like this little pipeline that's just surrounded by forest and a couple of mooring points as it comes up into this part of the port so super cool idea we're definitely going to integrate that and of course it'll look really cool once it's all detailed as well you can also bring over an uh, oil industry area here as well if you want to process some of the oil perhaps into plastics that a lot of these factories do actually need but yes, look, and we're having a ship built now. Wonderful, the shipyard's getting supplied. You're still missing out on animal products and metals. No worries, all these imports are starting to come in now. Uh, you're missing metals as well. That's okay, they will eventually arrive. Cool, but to help them arrive, we will actually uh, get our cargo train station hooked in. This is going to be important. So again, we'll come down to Earth. Let's go ahead and not go underground, though. Uh, no road guideline snap here, and let's snap into the grid. See how far away are we here. There's a tile between the road and the rail, isn't there? So let's maintain that as we come around. Uh, this now wants to be on a little road guideline here. There we go. That can go in. That now provides a connection uh, for the rail line. And then hopefully a little curve here it should see us through on a sensible angle. We probably are going to pretty much upset a lot of the train please today. And the gradient police at the same time as well. Could be a dangerous episode. But I think as a general concept, I'm pretty happy with that configuration. So I'd also like some of the ore storage over here too, specifically the um, ore storage buildings. Uh, they sort of stack coal in them. And again, it's a very much appreciated vibe. So we could have them here. Okay, don't think I'm terribly against that. Not the worst thing in the world, is it? Would be good if we could perhaps even move them up here a little bit alongside the rail. At that point, then we can bring another road connection through. And actually have it cross over the railings and loop back through the one-way system this side, which... Yeah, it might, might, might be the worst idea. I think we, we might give that a go. Might be relocating a little bit of that oil design, but that's okay. It's no problem. 
Okay, yeah, so let's flatten all this out. Let's sort of push this bit of the pay out a little bit. I'm just going to remove these temporarily too, but we will bring them back during the detail time lapse. Uh, just because I want these coal storage to take priority, if at all possible. Don't let the water resettle, of course. And uh, we do want to actually give uh, a power connection to you at least temporarily, just so we can see the ports being used now. Would be good to have some input coming in. Okay, look wonderful. Let's check on the road. Let's see what's happening here. So I'm going to be very impressed if this little road can handle all of this industrial traffic. It should be okay. Yeah, it, it should be alright, I think. There shouldn't be any major issues here. Very nice. Got some people coming in on the ferries now, hopefully. Yes, a few. Any bus enjoyers? Quite a few bus enjoyers. People with fine taste right here on this little plinth of concrete. Legends of the game. There you go. Get on the minibus. Away you go. Anyway. Yes, so the road seems to be sustaining the, the traffic at the minute, which is, of course, really important for builds like this. They're enormously industrial. And uh, very, very uh, traffic heavy. So let's bring this through. We also want to upgrade this into a one-way configuration as well. Let's go for that one. And then knock it back that way so they can feed the modular house factory. And then exit the system as they come back around. Cool. And then, yes, you're going to come all the way up here. And let's just see if this is enough for storage. Yes, that happens to be absolutely perfect, actually. So there's a really cool asset. So this is going to be a little bit of very much an aesthetic choice in the design here. Um, I'm not doing this in order to kind of make more money from the oil industry that we're extending. So I'm going to extend out the oil industry that we or the ore industry that we did ages ago, so all the way over this side of the map, the uh, muddy Da Vinci mines. Okay, and then I just want to paint this over. Uh, this little area of the port. Of course, we've done this before, right? Extended industry areas. We did something very similar uh, for our power plant build using the uh, ore, uh, oil industry stuff. I'm never going to get oil and ore correct, am I? <laughs> I've done that since like Bagusia. Never called it the right name. Cool. And then let's have you go there. So the industrial traffic through this part of the port, or the train traffic rather, shouldn't be so intense to the fact that it can't sustain a rail crossing here. It should still work pretty much okay, I think. Well, I guess we're going to find out. So let's see if we can come up with a little curve here. I just want to see what sort of vibes we can generate. Let's have that through there. Now the zoning here, I do want a little bit of zoning. So I'm thinking if we can come out of the grid snap, and then just do a little stretch of fencing. Can we reset the zoning to the road? Yes, we can. That is important then. So I want to make sure that happens. So everywhere where I want the zone in, probably up until that crossroads. Yeah, I want these industrial tiles here. We'll come to those in a second. Uh, but what we can do now with the ore industry stuff. So we're going to place down two ore storage. So these are the ones that kind of store the black looking coal sort of stuff. It's a little bit better than the one that's like this beige sand. I guess it's sand storage, isn't it? That's probably why. Uh, but then what I want to do uh, is bring in a little medium ore mine on a dirt road against this road here. Something like that. There we go. And then well, let's drag that in. So of course there's no ore here. I could use the better landscaping tools mod or extra landscaping tools in order to actually put some ore uh, under this asset. But I'm just going to turn it off. Okay. There's no ore for it to do here. Uh, I don't know. I might do that off camera. Maybe just adding a little bit of ore because these cranes are animated. So if we head over to the mountains, there we go. You'll see when they have ore underneath them, they will move around and turn. So I'm thinking that we can use this as in the port, almost like it's sort of loading coal onto barges, etc. Or it's you know, local storage here. There you go. You can really get the aesthetic there once it's all piled up, right? Really cool. <laughs> it's all coming off like that as well. Really adds to a port vibe. So I definitely want to have a little bit of that in there. And then we can use that now as kind of the end of the harbour. And then our pipeline design can come back through here uh, during the detailing time. That's of course. Uh, okay, so we should have uh, train connections now, right? Everyone's got a happy train. We should be okay to get in here. I'll fix this as well. Don't worry about that. Okay, but we'll, I guess we'll just wait and see. We'll wait and see just exactly how much traffic those trains are going to siphon off of the roads. 
Meanwhile, while that's happening, let's come in with a little bit of uh, generic industrial zoning. So again, you know, I mentioned before, uh, don't let the RCI demand dictate the way that your city grows. Place it so it's in a area that is appropriate. So I'm just going to leave a couple of four deep generic zonings here. And we'll see what happens with them. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, office stuff. You are not in the district, are you not? You're not wall to wall, are you? Yes, you are. Okay. I don't want that asset there. I do want a different one. I'm happy with that one, I think. That one's okay as well, but yeah, this is four by space. I want to regrow. But I could definitely get on board with wall to wall office zoning as like an extension of the warehouse. Hopefully we'll get the right asset in here. It's one of the tall ones that I want in. But then again, that one's not too bad either. So I might actually just stick with that one. Almost looks like an extension of the warehouse, doesn't it? So it's like they've got all the storage and processing in the warehouse, but you know, for logistics and HR administration, etc., they do need the office space and they have it next door to their warehouse there. I think that's quite appropriate. Cool, so we can see all these little warehouse yards starting to fill up now. This is fantastic news. And we are getting some assets in here that I don't want. I do want to be specific again about what assets are coming in. There we go, there's a train. Looks like he's importing. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he gets unloaded. It disappears. It comes in. Everyone's happy. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice indeed. Super satisfying to watch. I never use these cargo hubs because I never really like the rail across the water, but we've managed to kind of integrate it onto the land here. So we should be okay. You guys are alright? You're just getting a little bit fussy on the rail crossing? A lot of this traffic will calm down. The reason it gets so nuts in the first place is because all these storage buildings want to be filled. So it just goes a little bit crazy, but let it run for a couple of minutes and you'll sort of see the true traffic flow, if that makes sense. Tremendous. Wonderful. Okay. But really happy with the way the port is slowly coming together. Just sort of take a little look back now and see what how much of a big addition do those cranes make, especially on the shipyard and that ore mine. Having extra cranes in a cargo harbour is a huge aesthetic, especially in vanilla. Cool. So these boys don't seem to want to grow that much. That's okay, I guess. We probably could do with some services here. Uh, why don't we go ahead and grab the new high capacity police station? Uh, I don't think I want you here either anymore. We've, we've sort of relocated you, haven't we? Um. Okay, let's have that there. And then we probably want a fire station as well. Imagine high capacity. Probably going to be a little bit too bold for this area, I think, isn't it? Let's just place it in and see what we think. Hmm. I don't know, actually. I do kind of like that. <laughs> That's kind of hard to deny. I'm not entirely sure. It's quite modern, isn't it? But then again, so are the wall-to-wall -wall offices and they work. That's a tough one, that. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I don't know. We might leave that for the detail and time-lapse. Well, what other choices do we have? We've got this one. Yeah. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, we'll see come the end. We'll, we'll see in the detail and time-lapse, won't we, which one gets added. Uh, okay, so now we've got some spaces here um, where indeed I think a little bit of uh, further generic industry zoning uh, might be welcome. Now, I'm going to mass zone this, right? Which is something I have come to not enjoy about cities. But it does have its place, especially when we're being very careful with the assets. So let's come into the grid as well and just bring through a little bit of walkability here and there where it's needed. There we go. So I essentially want to make them all historical at level 1 and try and avoid repeated assets where possible. Let's make sure these guys are growing up into garments limited. I really want the other factories here though. There is some decent 4x4 assets in the generic pool. Okay. I'm happy with that again because we're getting that prop detailing um, out the back of the building. Which again when we're sat against our main roads is really helpful with the overall design isn't it just having those little props it's a shame we don't get access to like basically any industrial props in the vanilla game and um, even though they are in the game without find it you can't place them it's kind of silly okay. oh we're getting is these bloody factories <laughs> like come on there is more in that pool than that okay there we go things are growing up now this is what we want to happen even a little bit more office space there on the corner might be welcome you know um, there is actually a regular office asset that I would like to generate, if we could. 
Um, it's the 4x4 four four one. Can we do it there? Maybe let's delete a little space there and see if we can get some of the office space in. There we go. That's what we like. Let's do that one. And then make all these historical. So now with a little block of mass zone generic. And when you pay attention to what assets are coming in and how they're all prop detailed, you can create these little industry yards within your industrial areas. Whether it be sort of an industry DLC area or a cargo harbour like this, it can be done. You've just got to be patient with the asset growth. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that to sit in there as well. So we're going to add into the vibe overall. Uh, yes, your whole historical, you're not the asset I want. And you are still building... Animal products is an issue, isn't it? Um, we might not be producing too many animal products at the farm. Hopefully they might get imported. And then plain timber and plastic is all being demanded as well. Okay, so let's configure the one-way system now. Let's have a look at what we want to do. Yes, yeah, so we've got entrance here. They can come in and access uh, the storages here. Which is fine, they can carry on and then access the shipyard and the car factory no problem, plus the office space and that's all okay. Then we come up here, the one way system flows around, it can then exit to the modular house factory. Where it can, its suppliers can be picked up before entering the one way loop again to come and drop them off, that should be okay. We got access into the ore area here. And then we can also bring... People through this way, they can come through to the generic zoning, which we do need some workers here by the looks of it. We'll get some zoning um, over in the town. Oh yes, you all want workers, don't you? Okay. Um, let's not miss this opportunity then, because we do actually want these buildings to stay. Let's just dump a bunch of residential here. Um, you will probably want a park to live up here as well, I imagine, won't you? So let's give you a small playground. Sure, that should just boost the land value enough so they start spawning in there. Because we do want workers. But it's growing up. I'm pretty happy with it. In terms of public transport, we do have the passenger rail here. There's a few dead people at the New Bioka State as well. Hopefully that'll get picked up. Uh, yeah, so we've got the passenger line here. Um, which we could just bring down uh, into the port. And maybe have a train station here. Uh, for which I think I'll probably use... The new elevated train station, actually, from plazas and promenades. I don't think that's going to clash too much, is it? I think it's okay. I think we're going to be building quite a modern port here. You know, because all these factories and warehouses, they all have workers. Um, there's a lot of reason for people to come out this way on public transport. So hopefully that will be alright. Let's go ahead and bring this one on. Bring it out of the station. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit of level terrain. There we go. Just so it sits level. And then we can push that out. And then we'll just prepare that slope. Uh, for this cargo rail to come down. And then hook into it. Or passenger rail I suppose. It's not cargo isn't it? I guess you could say people are cargo. But otherwise guys. That does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. Uh, there is a bunch of detailing to do around here. Including some repeated tree patterns. And uh, upgrade this dirt frame uh, into an actual road. Even though it's not really accessible, it's not needed, but we'll probably do it anyway. Uh, more refinements and assets coming in. Make sure these don't abandon. A little bits of detail around here. Lots of overgrowth and lots and lots of fencing. Um, especially along places like this where we've got the rail and road infrastructure uh, all knocking about with each other. And look at this now for a view, right? <laughs> How cool. How industrial does this look? Huge lower than that pipeline from Zhukaboa. All these little ore storage things as well next to the factory with the cranes in the background and the terraforming out on the keys with the peninsulas it's all really cool aesthetic building these cargo harbors and there's so many different shapes and sizes you can take them in uh, really fun builds but otherwise let's detail new Oaks cargo harbor and then we'll be right back
Hey guys, let's have a detailing review. Uh, so at the entrance to the port, we've actually extended the ore industry area uh, and brought the main building over here as well because this levels up and changes the way that it looks. It serves as a really nice cut of port entrance, if you like, doesn't it? So really happy with that. I'm going to have that over here. And just look at the scale of this thing. It just has like a real sense of facility, doesn't it? All these little stacks from bringing in different industry assets in. Uh, the unique factories as well, of course. So, you know, really giving theme and purpose to these sorts of buildings. It results in a really f wonderful sort of final vanilla product, uh, doesn't it? Uh, hilariously enough, I did try and find something to sit against the waterfront at the back of the car factory. And I placed on... This isn't going to stay, by the way. <laughs> but I just found it hilarious. That um, this little floating cafe here, when it's placed in the sea, actually sinks underwater. Like, could you imagine trying to eat your lunch on this thing? <laughs> I just found that so funny, like, just trying to hold, like, a, a glass of water or something. And you're just bouncing all over the place. <laughs> imagine the waves from this orgy of bloody cruise liners. I wish they would patch this, but they're never going to. So, yes, you have to ignore the uh, ship festival happening out in the bay. But furthermore, we are producing ships now. You can see all these little cranes moving around, which is really cool. And then just little bits of green belt detailing. Um, it's a little repeating theme we've had around New Bioke is lots of green belt, even around the airport. And uh, it just, it's nice to include in a port, actually. Just a little bit of walkable space like that. Not everything's totally tarmacked. In real life ports, you do get those mass container yards, but it's not really possible in the unmodded game. So uh, we can be a little bit more creative with it. Also dropped in some of the car ports as well from the content creator pack. Um, which aren't really getting used, so I saw you guys had some comments on them as well. I have just said not getting used to someone's course come <laughs> and parked in one. But yeah, they do seem a little bit quiet, so I'm um, not sure what's going on there, but included a few of them next to some garbage processing as well. And how nicely has this pipeline design turned out integrated into a port like this? Really happy with it. You really can't tell that it's like elevated monorail road when it's like that. It really sort of looks like a dedicated pipeline for the oil tankers. So super happy with that. Again, big shout out to Zukaboa for all of his port designs uh, in his video. Again, it's linked down below. Go show him some support. Really good vanilla gameplay. I also brought in a glass manufacturing plant again from the oil industry alongside a maintenance building just to expand the facility and then also upgraded these roads in this section into two-way just so the glass manufacturing plant can stay fed. Um, otherwise, they would have to loop through the entire system uh, just to get it back to the manufacturing plant. So we just remove the one-way system where necessary. And then if they do want to pass back into the uh, area over here, where the container ports are, then they do fall back into uh, that one-way loop, which goes in all directions now, which is really nice and happy. And then all this generic industry uh, has slotted in uh, quite cutely. It's so not often we use these assets. Uh, the generic industry stuff, we tend to gravitate toward more sort of industry DLC stuff. Uh, and then we've also got another uh, yard over here, which is storing paper, I believe. Yes, it is. Uh, for one of the factories. We do get a little bit of train back up here sometimes, but I think it's just when they're trying to get into each other's stations. It never really congests any further than that, so I don't think we need to worry about it. But it should be okay. Uh, and then the trains look really cool, kind of flowing up and out of the facility now. Uh, as we've terraformed uh, all these mountain landscapes uh, on the sort of perimeter of the cargo harbour here to sort of look a little bit more appealing, just terraform them in a little bit of that forest brush. It really brings them to life, that little bit more, I think. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please leave me some likes, comments and shares down below. It really does help bring more people uh, to my channel that might enjoy the videos as well as you guys. And if you're one of those that haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Really happy with this container port. Probably one of the best vanilla ones I've ever done. Uh, definitely better than Palavans and the various, I think. Really diverse, lots of ideas here. Different blends of industry and zoning and storage, unique factories. Really cool. And I hope you've managed to take some sort of inspiration from today's episode as well. These cargo harbours uh, are very much under that remit of very ugly very quickly if care and attention isn't taken. But otherwise, lots of terraforming and appropriate orientation should so see you through with these sorts of builds for your cities. Please enjoy the cinematics, but otherwise I will shut up and I will be there. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.